Apple News. Now, many reports ago, we talked about how the corporate media would start to turn on the economy and the central bank will be pushing this agenda. And what we're seeing right now is that this is starting to happen. Now, why I say this is because we do understand and reported that the economists now say that this is Trump's economy. This is what the central bankers have been waiting for. They wanted the president in the White House for a certain period of time. Once he was established and the economy turned to him, this is when they could start their campaign. Their campaign now will to will be to sh slowly show the economy is falling apart under Trump and the corporate media will be the mouthpiece for the central bank to do this. And we know that the corporate media is the, is the mouthpiece for the cabal, the corporate media really doesn't report on news. They're really more interested in propaganda. And what we're seeing right now is that the corporate media is already showing that the housing market is fizzling. They're saying it started to fizzle back in 2017. And here we are reporting about how the housing market's doing, how the uh, manufacturing area is doing, how the retail sector is doing, how the corporation sector is doing, and on and on and on. Now, we've been showing that the economy has never been doing well. I mean, Trump inherited a complete disaster, and it's still a complete disaster because it's a central bank economy. It's not a president economy. The president, yes, makes laws about taxes and things like that, but that all filters back to the central bank. Remember, the government is controlled by the central bank because they have to borrow all the currency. I mean, we have talks of the government shutting down because they're running out of money. The government ran out of money a long time ago. They're borrowing money. They don't have any money. But of course, they're making us believe that the government's going to be running out of money. This is all borrowed money from the central bank. So it's, it's not real. It's completely fake. Now, what we're going to start to see is, and this is not going to happen all at once, we're going to see a lot of stories from the corporate media on how different parts of the economy aren't doing as well anymore. And they're going to make this known to everyone. Now, we already see that the housing market has been slowly crashing. And this is from the bubbles that the central banks have pumped up over a period of time. Now, housing starts, they have plunged by 8.2% month to month in December. This is five times worse than expected and the biggest drop since November 2016. And remember, November was now revised lower. And we could see at this point that was there really a recovery in housing? No, because when we look at housing starts year on year change, it's been declining since the pump up around mid 2012. And it's been declining ever since which shows us there was never a recovery. It was an inflation of a bubble, and the bubble is losing air. And what happens with people losing their job, people not making enough money, and housing prices going through the roof, people can't afford it. That leaves hedge funds, investors, getting free money from the Fed, foreign investors, and when foreign investors leave, it leaves less individuals or less groups in the mix. Now, Chinese investors, they've been leaving because they've been told to take their money and put it back into the One Belt, One Road and invest in themselves. Housing is now falling. The American people have been on the sidelines for a very long time. So we see housing falling apart in Canada, Australia, the United States, countries throughout Europe. And once this goes, it's going to be absolutely awful. Now, we see the Philly Fed. Well, this has slumped also. It has reached its highest since 2014 and mid-2017, where they still called it the Obama economy. And the Philly Fed 
has been sliding since that period of time. Like I said, we're going to see, this was all everyone getting in, pushing it up, bubbles moving up, and then slowly bringing it down, making it look like now the economy is failing. We see this happening right in front of our eyes, and we're going to see the corporate media come out with more information on this, saying how the economy is not doing as well as it was during Obama's time because of everything that Trump has been doing, which is completely fake, phony, and false. The economy never really went anywhere. This was just bubbles being pumped up, free money pushed in to make it look like things were great, and then they gave it some time. Trump brought it down. This is the setup right now. And we're going to see the corporate media start to report on this. Now, it's very interesting. We talked about NAFTA and Trump when he was um, out there campaigning. He said he was going to get rid of NAFTA. And, of course, everything that you say on the campaign, sometimes you have to do other things before you get to it. Now, there are other presidents that they just say things in their campaign just to say them and they never do anything with it. They just lied. Now, we're looking at Trump. I'm not saying that he's doing everything that he says. I'm not saying that he's going to be doing everything he says. But what we can see right now is that his actions and what he's doing is moving in that direction. And we also need to remember is that he's fighting against the deep state, the cabal, which is very, very difficult because they're so entrenched in government. And we see that with NAFTA, they started out saying we're going to get rid of NAFTA. And then there was a lot of uh, Republicans, Democrats um, within government, all part of the same thing, saying that, no, you can't do this. We need discussions. And so we said, OK, you know what? Let's make a new deal out of NAFTA. Let's discuss it now. And I've said this a couple of reports ago. Eventually, what I think he's going to do is he's going to give them this to rediscuss NAFTA and then slowly push them into canceling NAFTA altogether. And it looks like right now Trump said that terminating the North American Free Trade Agreement would result in the best deal. And he's saying that, hey, listen, we might have to terminate NAFTA. And I think this is the direction he's going in. And I think he's going to actually get rid of it. In the end, just like the TPP and the rest, boom, gone. We see the dollar index broke down to its weakest level since 2014. Now, even though the Fed is raising rates and the stock market's going up and everything seems great, the dollar index is weakening right now. And what we're seeing is that the economy, the dollar, it's been weakening for a very long time. This is the end game. This is the end of a system, the end of the dollar as we know it today. And we can see that China right now, they know exactly what's happening. Why? Because the entire system is going to be moved from the U.S. to China. The central bank does not care. They have no allegiance to a country, group, or people. They could care less about that. The only reason the cabal likes the Fed is because they make a huge amount of money. They can sanction other countries. They can control countries. But the actual central, the central bank of all central banks, the Rothschilds, they don't care about countries. They don't care about the people. They care about controlling the system, loaning this currency out with interest attached, which could never ever be repaid it's completely impossible and what they're doing right now is they're setting everything up and it's going to be moved away from the united states and the central bank doesn't care this is why the chinese credit rating agency downgraded the united states s p moody's fitch they didn't do anything because they understand this debt cannot be sustained. Everything is being put into place. And we see it happening right now. Now, China, we see them dumping treasuries. 
According to the just released Treasury International Capital data for the month of November, Chinese Treasury holdings dropped from 1.189 billion in October to 1.176 billion in December. This is the lowest since July. This might be accelerated if the US and China enter a trade war. China is out there saying, listen, we will dump more treasuries if we go into a trade war. And I think China is going to end up dumping a lot more because as the system is being prepared and ready to be transitioned to over to China, there's no reason for China to have treasuries, especially when they just downgraded the United States. Think about what's happening here. Japan, they hold about 1.08 trillion worth of treasuries. They decreased it by 9.9 .9 billion from last month. So we see countries already dumping treasuries here. Not a whole bunch of treasuries compared to how much they're holding, but they're dumping them. And with this credit rating being lowered by the Chinese Credit Rating Agency, well, we're going to see more countries say, you know something? Too risky. I don't want to hold this anymore. And this is going to be the beginning of the end. And it looks like the central bankers are pushing this agenda because how do you move everyone over without hurting the countries too much? You got to get rid of the treasuries. You got to make sure they're secure because when the system goes down, those treasuries are going to be worth absolutely nothing. And we see right now, this has been the plan all along. So we're going to start seeing we're going to start seeing uh, news reports coming out of you know all the corporate media news outlets to tell you how bad the economy is doing and most likely this is going to start in the next couple of weeks where we're going to see a lot of this information saying oh look at this all of a sudden the economy is turning but they're not just going to come out and say it they're going to say the housing market is fizzling it hasn't been doing well since 2017 the retail market well it didn't do as well as we thought and they're going to start the slide now they're going to talk about manufacturing the gdp numbers and how trump's um tax cuts and everything else's tax plan how it didn't work and everything's starting to slide this is going to be the new reports that are going to be coming out of the corporate media because this is the setup for everyone to blame the current administration for what is about to happen now trump has other plans he's looking to make a deal with the new system he knows we have to go into a new system he knows we need to get rid of the central bank this is why he has andrew jackson hanging on the wall it's not because he likes the picture it's a great picture of andrew jackson there's a reason andrew jackson got rid of the central banking system his whole entire campaign was to get rid of the central banking system. And of course, they tried to assassinate him, but it failed. This is what is going to happen in this country, where everything is going to change. We have to join the new trade system. Yes, in the beginning, it's going to seem fantastic, but the central bank will hide in the shadows, will not show its face. The, the system might be backed by gold or gold might be used as a confidence builder the system most likely will be uh, hooked to the oil in the middle east and other places will be the petro yuan that will be used and the central bank for many years will hide in the background don't worry they're going to be making a lot of money off the system because they're loaning the government funds with interest attached and eventually what's going to happen is we're going to have a repeat. If you go back in history, we've seen the same pattern over and over and over. They're very patient. They're very methodical. They don't rush anything. They take their time. There's no reason to rush when you're controlling the world. And this is what we're going, this is what's going to happen. But Trump does know he needs to get out of this old system. This old system is death. This old system is spiraling downwards. He knows this. And he's trying to transition us into a new system, prepare us for the new system. That is what is happening right now. And this is why all these trade agreements that we have right now need to be completely eradicated 
because they don't benefit the United States or the people of the United States. It benefits the deep state, the cabal at the time. It worked to benefit them. It didn't benefit the people, it didn't create more jobs, it didn't help the country out. And this is why this is being done. And this is why Trump has been speaking to Xi Jinping about the One Belt, One Road. And most likely, um, we, the United States, will be joining these, this new trade system because this new trade system, this is going to be throughout Asia, Europe, Africa, South Africa, and eventually the United States. And we're seeing this is what this is all being set up for. But we're going to go through a transition, a transition from this dying system into a new system that is completely separate and apart from the United States. It will not be the reserve currency of the world unless the people around the world can stand up and say, you know, we, we don't want the central bank system. We would like to have maybe the blockchain, a cryptocurrency of our own where we can, can control it. We don't need banks. We, there's no reason for them. And you know what? The currency can be issued without interest. There's no reason to have the central bank. They really don't do anything. If this is how they manage the global economy, the economies of countries, most of them are in debt. Most of them go through these cycles of recession, depression, good time, recession, depression. This is not a managed economy. And before, once the, when, when Andrew Jackson was president of the central bank, guess what? We didn't have any of this stuff. And what we're seeing right now is a push, and I do believe this is going to be a huge push to get rid of the central banking system. And we see at this point, just maybe just in the United States, but he's going to try to get rid of it. And this is the push, but we will go through a transition the transition will either be a hard fall if it's created by the central bank. If we go through this collapse, the central bank, they don't care if it's soft, hard or anything like that. They don't care about the people. They don't care if the people lose their wealth. And every time we've seen a recession or depression, it's usually very hard. Trump is going to try to soften the blow. And this is the main battle that we're seeing right 